what if I told you it was possible to film three videos in one sitting? Sorry, that was my Michael Caine. It won't happen again. Okay, so I'm trying to film three videos today. I don't know what I'm thinking. I don't know if it's possible. So this particular video that you're seeing should just be a get ready with me. So I have some new stuff and some classic stuff. I have a new foundation. Hold on. Okay, I changed my clothes. I got a new dress. Look at the sleeves. Dude, I love this dress so much. I feel like a million bucks. It is from Fashion to Figure, the best plus size dress company on planet Earth, just so you guys know. Keep on cleaning up. Why do I only have one earring in? Okay, a couple things I'm gonna be working on today is looking at the camera. I was about to go nuts over my last video, the wet and wild one, because I wasn't looking at the camera at all. And now that I told you that, if you watch it, you're gonna be miserable. So, like I keep saying, we're gonna do a get ready with me. We're just gonna talk about life, hang out, try out some new products, try out some old try and true products. So I was at Walgreens late last night and I saw that the L'Oreal foundations were all buy one, get one half off. So I picked up two that I've never tried before. So we have the Infallible Pro Matte and then we have this, the Infallible Longwear Stick. Oh, this is the Infallible Longwear Shaping Stick Foundation. <sighs> I don't know which one to try. I really, really like stick foundations, so I want to try this one. We'll try her another day. Do I even have a foundation brush? <laughs> All right, I'm just gonna go in. It feels good. It feels similar to my Makeup Forever one that I just ran out of, so let's pray. I'm gonna use the F88 Flat Angled Kabuk from Sigma, if I can get it open. Hello. I could probably make a compilation video that would be three hours long of me trying to open packages. I need to learn to open them before I start filming. Okay, this looks amazing so far. Oh, wow. It feels and looks very similar to my Makeup Forever one with a slightly stiffer formula. And not, when I say stiffer, I don't mean in a bad way at all. Okay, now I do have anti-redness moisturizer on my cheek right here. So I don't know if this is really gonna give you the full effect, but this looks phenomenal ignore right here where my fig tan is like coming off wow this is getting me real excited i got this for six dollars because like i said the l'oreal stuff was buy one get one half off i'm pretty sure it was 12.99 originally and my makeup for everyone is like 40 dollars. so i love 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 the convenience of a stick foundation just not having to get anything messy Wow, I'm obsessed! Okay, so today is my eight year wedding anniversary. But as you guys probably already know, we already celebrated it. We um already gave each other our gifts. I got the surprise of my life this year with being surprised with an African gray bird. Um, and I did vlog like the first time I got to meet the bird. I just don't know if that vlog will be up before or after this. Cause like I said, I have no schedule. I'm thinking that vlog is gonna be up after this video. So if any of you don't follow me on Facebook and you wanna see a really cute video that Nick made for me and also my reaction to it, go to my Facebook. I will link it below. It was like the best day of my life. I've never, ever, ever been so surprised ever in my life. I'm gonna try not to to beat a dead horse and try not to talk about this in every single video but this just happened a couple days ago so I'm still so excited about it some of you guys might not know this and some of you guys might know that I've just been dying to get an African gray I'm gonna use a wet and wild photo focus concealer I've been dying for an African gray for quite some time now and there's been three instances over the last couple months where we thought we had gotten one. All three times they were rehomes because never in a million years would I have been able to afford a new like baby African gray like from a breeder or from a store. Um, and I really at first wanted to do a rehome because I'm like, you know, if someone's getting rid of their bird, that bird's gonna be really heartbroken because birds are really, really like sensitive and social animals and they get really bonded to their owners. And so a rehome appealed to me A because of the price and B because I was like, I want to be the person who takes care of a heartbroken bird and makes it you know feel better and also birds live a really really long time and I kind of felt like it would be better for me to outlive my bird than for the bird to outlive me because when I die that bird's gonna be devastated because an African Grey lives to be like 60 or 70 years so 
obviously I'm almost 30, so if I have a baby, it's gonna outlive me. And that would be really heartbreaking to a bird, so I just, I don't know, a rehome was really like what I wanted. So at first, Nick was totally opposed to the idea because we had parakeets before, and despite my efforts of working with them every single day for like nine months straight, um, I could not get them tame. It was my first time ever owning a bird and, and it's a big long story, but basically I made some mistakes and I, I wasn't able to tame these parakeets. They didn't care about us at all. <laughs> they were cute, I loved them. They were really fun to look at, um, but eventually they kind of became, in Nick's mind, the parakeets were like just another thing to stress about and feed. And I know that doesn't sound good. I mean, we are animal lovers, don't get me wrong, but these birds, did not like us. <laughs> I mean, you'd come up to the cage and they would freak out and fly around and they hated us. And after like six months, I was able to get them to eat out of my hand and it was like, oh my gosh, a huge breakthrough. And then two days later, they were terrified of me. So anyway, we found a better home for them. Their life improved. They went to a lady that had a flight cage. And after that, Nick was like, I don't want birds. So, so to contour, I've been mixing these two. I have a contour stick from Anastasia and one from Wet n Wild. This one's really warm. This one's really cool. This is in the color Fawn. And this is Call Me Maple. So anyway, one day um, on a Sunday after meeting, I was like, can we go to the bird store and just like play with the birds? Cause there's a store right by my house called Wholesale Bird and Cage and they have this big room just full of parrots that you can walk in and like just let them land on you and play with you and stuff. So I took him there and that was his first experience with a parrot that was tame and friendly and talked and uh, it was a cockatoo and he was like, I love this. And the next day he was like, I can't stop thinking about that cockatoo. And I was like, I'm telling you birds are dope. <laughs> so anyway, that was how he finally got on board was that I sneakily took him to that place. So, long story long, we started looking on Craigslist. Three different times we thought we were getting an African Grey. Only one of them did we actually get to meet, and it turned out she was the wrong type of African Grey, which I didn't realize. I really wanted a Congo, and this was a Timna. There's nothing wrong with a Timna. All birds are wonderful. But I was like, if I'm gonna spend this much money and have a lifelong pet, I want it to be the type of bird that I want. We actually drove, I live in Missouri, and we actually drove like halfway to Arkansas one time at 5 a.m. to go get a bird. And I actually had footage that got deleted of me like crying in the car on the way there because I was so excited thinking I was actually gonna get this bird. Um, and that one fell through. And anyway, I just had completely put it out of my mind. I was like, you know what? It's not the right time. These are all falling through. I'm just gonna stop thinking about this bird. And I literally completely forgot about it. And uh, Nick went to Kansas City last week or like the week before or something to visit our friends. And I called him and uh, we were on the phone while he was there. And I was like, I decided I didn't want a bird anymore. And he's like, oh really? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, why? And I was like, you know, I don't know. I just feel like everyone thinks it's a bad idea and everybody's warning me against it. And you know, we keep thinking we have one and then it falls through and it's a lot of money and it's a big commitment and blah, blah. You know, I was just cold feet. And I also was like, and I feel like I brainwashed you into wanting a bird when you don't really want one. And he was like, okay. And <laughs> anyway, the bird was nowhere on my mind so. So you can imagine my surprise when I found out that he had found a baby African Grey, brand new with hatch papers from a store called Varieties in St. Louis. Got our friends and family to basically contribute to it and put a down payment on this bird and surprise me with it. Gosh, I have never in my life ever been so surprised. I mean, the effort that went into this whole thing is just, it is beyond me and I like, I wanna cry just thinking about it. <sighs> I'm glad I just bored you with that story. Oh, the blush I wanna use is in my purse, darn it. I've been really into this little palette I got from Wet n Wild um, and I'm gonna use that today. I'm just gonna do a pretty simple eye look. So anyway, I'm like, now it's all I'm thinking about is this bird. <laughs> So we can't bring her home until um, January because she's not weaned yet. So when I went to meet her Saturday, the lady had to come and like give her 
food out of a syringe because she has to eat, you know, so many times a day. So I can't bring her home until she's weaned. And I'm actually really happy about that because with a rehome, you better be completely prepared and have everything that the bird needs and have your house ready if you're gonna do a rehome. And if you wanna take time to get your house ready and, and get a cage and get everything that you need, that bird could be sold, you know? So this was, this actually is perfect because now I have time to set up my bird's room. I actually want this room to be my bird's room. I'm gonna move all my makeup stuff downstairs to this area that my mom helped me clean out. And now I am able to get a cage and then um, in this place knocks like $300 off a cage if you buy a bird from them, which is awesome. And ultimately I think this is just gonna be better than getting a rehome because I know what her diet has been. I know what she's been exposed to. I have her hatch papers. I know she's a female. Like there were a couple times where, you know, I was gonna get a bird and they're like, we think it's a male, but we're not really sure. Or I lost the hatch papers or, you know, whatever. So this is really ideal, but there's no, obviously no way I could have ever gotten this bird without everybody who contributed and made this a reality. So, wow, I've been talking a lot. That's what's new in my life. So this room will be moved to the basement for sure. Um, and I know you guys have also been wondering after watching my last vlog about my salon getting moved to my basement. And that is now actually a, I don't know if it's gonna happen. My stepdad um, is also my landlord. Um, my stepdad doesn't own this house, but the man, the guy that my stepdad like works for owns the house and my stepdad's like in charge of all this guy's stuff. So anyway, my stepdad is my landlord and he basically says what we can do to this house and what we can't do. Um, and he said he doesn't think I would be able to hook water up down there, like my shampoo bowl, because of issues with like the storm cellar and all this stuff. But it's not like a for sure thing. I think he said he would come by and look and just make sure I'm gonna use this color right here. So it's possible that I like spoke too soon with that, but even if I can't move the salon down there, we still wanna try and take some time to waterproof that room and maybe just use it for something. Cause it's like a whole room with tons of storage that isn't being used, you know what I mean? And uh, you guys seem to really like that whole like renovation process. So I will definitely still be vlogging that. Now that I'm getting this bird, I really, really want the salon to move. I mean, I wanted the salon to move to the basement anyway, but my salon is right there, one door over, and there's just a wall that separates this makeup room. It's, it's a really weird setup. So if my bird is in this room, I'm gonna have to be really, really careful and do something to make sure that hairspray and fumes and chemicals and stuff don't get into this room because that will kill my bird. Girl, this makeup look is cute. I love the fact that this palette has a matte gray. I'm just obsessed. By the way, this is off subject, but talking about eyeshadow, I had a 10 person wedding party on Saturday. And when I got there, the bride's mom showed me this photo. It was a glitter, it was like a rose gold glitter cut crease with winged eyeliner. And she was like, we all want this. And I was like, okay, I can't do that. <laughs> I can do that eye look, obviously, but it takes a long time. I mean, it was a full cut crease. It wasn't a half cut crease. It was like this whole thing cut out with concealer, covered with rose gold glitter, like loose glitter, winged liner. Like it was for 10 people with the amount of time we had, it, it wasn't gonna happen. Had I known beforehand, I would have told her beforehand uh, that that wouldn't really work for a wedding party of that size. But what I did say was I can do something with those colors. Like if you want rose gold, I can definitely use those colors and give you guys all a really beautiful eye look, just not this specific style of like a cut crease. And anyway, um, I looked at my kit and I was like, well crap, I just told them I could do this. And I don't have a rose gold loose glitter in my makeup kit. I don't really have loose glitter in my like wedding kit at all. So one of the bridesmaids who I actually did her wedding like last year, goes, oh, I have um, a palette with that color in it. And she whipped out the Anastasia Sultry palette. And it was my first time ever seeing that palette in person. And I was like, oh uh, my gatos. That palette is so beautiful outside and inside. Um, and I was so happy she had it because they had this perfect rose gold glitter shade and I used it on all the girls and it had a matte gray in it. That's what made me think of it is this has a matte gray and that palette had a matte gray and I was just obsessed. I'm feeling the matte gray lately, girls. Do any of you guys, let me know if you guys own the Sultry palette and if you love it because I was obsessed and I wanna buy it. And Anastasia is amazing and they actually give me 
a really decent pro discount. I think it's like 30% off. So that palette might be totes worth it. I'm not supposed to be buying makeup right now, but I keep buying it anyway. Case in point, this foundation, which I'm super glad I bought. Oh, I feel like I should have kept this matte. And then I was scrolling through Instagram last night and saw that Cover Effects Custom Enhancer Drops were stinking 50% off. And I was like, I, I have to. I will never, ever, ever, ever get this product at this price ever again. So I bought some of those. I bought a Juvia's Place palette on Black Friday. Like I'm not, I'm not doing well. Okay, so I'm going to do liner and lashes um, and come back because that's actually gonna be a separate video. So I will be right back. Right, lashes and liner are on. You're already gonna hear me talk about this in that video, but these lashes by Vianney Strick and Delarza Cosmetics are <laughs> amazing okay so while I was filming that video I was like doing my eyeliner and I rested my pinky on my cheek and when I pulled it away the foundation was gone so that doesn't mean it's a bad foundation it just means it might need a little bit of powder so I'm gonna take my celebration foundation illumination powder from it cosmetics and just get her around the cheek area and maybe the chin slash goatee area areas where i kind of get like oily and for blush i've been obsessed with this wet and wild color icon blush in the color hummingbird hype it's limited edition which really annoys me bad and i'm using my new favorite blush brush from sigma this is the spotlight duster oh yeah Oh, it's so glowy. On camera, it really emphasizes my pores and stuff, but in person, it's just like, hi, I have cheeks. I have no idea what I was saying because I just took like a four hour break, but I believe I had just finished powdering certain areas of my face and I realized something. So normally I always moisturize my face with this Cetaphil lotion, but when I was at Walgreens last night, I got the Cetaphil that comes in the tub, like the cream, and I put that on my face today and it is really really oily and greasy so i think that could be affecting why the foundation kind of rubbed off um but if you ignore that this foundation is stunning i took a huge break when my camera died and we went all the way out to st louis to see my bird and we went to best buy to get a new camera battery but they were out but anyway um this is this is how it looks my eyes are creasing a little though probably should use like an eye primer so um this is like totally random and off subject but i feel like it's on my mind. I want to talk to you guys about it. Um, a couple videos ago, I actually tried to talk about this, but I my audio in the video didn't work. So I ended up having to like do a voiceover and I didn't really get to talk to you guys about what I wanted to talk about. But I took a little break from YouTube not too long ago. Probably like the second or third time I've done that since I started. Do I have like Taco Bell on my face? Um, and it wasn't that long of a break. Admittedly, it was like, I don't know two to three weeks where I didn't post anything. Took that break out of discouragement and I was very, very close to giving up. But I realized something. I realized that I think a big reason that things aren't working out for me the way I want them to on YouTube is because my lack of uploading. I feel like once a week is a lot, considering like not only how long it takes me to film, but how long it takes me to edit. People hear this and they think it's ludicrous, but it takes me a good six hours to edit a video. And I just cannot comprehend how somebody could upload three videos per week. And that's really how you grow your channel is by being consistent and uploading as often as you possibly can, which is really hard to do when it's not your job like most people I know that upload three times a week not all but most are YouTube is their job well I have a job and I do volunteer work so um I, I can't comprehend it but I realized that something I used to do which is what I'm doing right now is cluster filming I would film two to three videos on a Monday and edit each video throughout the week and I definitely allowed it to be too much for me at that time I was uploading every Tuesday and Friday for a while there and I allowed it to consume too much of my time um, because I've never ever ever been good with like time management skills I'm gonna use this black uh, liner from Sigma I've never been good at planning I've never been good with time management I've never been good at organizing like I have never had a notebook or a planner or anything 
for my YouTube channel. I just like half the time I decide like the day before or a couple days before what type of video I want to make that day. So I finally realized like, okay, if I really want this to work, but I don't want it to consume my life, I can A vlog because that's a really easy way to get content up and it's fun for me and it's fun for you guys. And B, I can cluster film. And C, I can keep a planner and plan out my content and just be more organized and be more prepared. So, so I stopped being a little brat and that's where we're at right now. I'm working on organizing my whole life um, and my YouTube channel kind of falls under that category. Children growing, women producing, some going, some going. Let's dab a little bit. Ooh, ooh, ooh. All right, now let's get some brows on fleek. That's probably the first thing I'm gonna teach my bird to say is brows on fleek. Maybelline Total Temptation Brow Definer. I really liked that Wet n Wild one I tried in my last video. And I was like, I think I like this one better. <laughs> and then I like lost that one or I didn't have it on me or something. And I used this again and I was like, oh, <laughs> nothing compares. Nothing compares. Nothing compares to you. Wait, have I already used that joke on my Chanel? Uh, what else did I want to talk to you guys about? Oh, yeah, okay, so I mentioned this on Twitter. By the way, if you guys want to talk to me and not have to wait as long for a response, you should follow me on Twitter. I posted on Twitter that uh, sometime soon, I'm not exactly sure when, but I'm gonna do a parody of an Ariana Grande song. And I really, I think I'm gonna ask my cousin, Cammie, if she can film it because Cammie is an amazing, she's like 15 years old, but she's like a, prodigy photographer. <laughs> I think I'm gonna wear this dress because it looks so good. I'm so nervous that somebody else is going to steal my idea and do it. I'm doing a parody of her song called Breathing. This is the record right now. You heard it first. I'm going to parody that song. So if anyone else does it, I'm still gonna do it. I'm adding a little more blush. I'm adding cream blush. Anyway, I cannot wait for you guys to see it. So what I'm gonna do is like, I've already written all the lyrics. I'm gonna download like a karaoke version of her song, record myself singing my own lyrics and try to get the recording like as good as I can. I don't know anything about home recording, but I do have like garage band and a nice mic. And we're gonna make like a legit music video. <laughs> Hopefully it doesn't get flanked for copyright. Okay, to highlight, I'm gonna go in with the Cover FX Custom Glitter Drops. Girl, I wore this on Saturday and every person in that bridal party was like, I love your highlight. And I was like, <laughs> this came in my Berksy Charm. By the way, if you don't have Boxy Charm, what exactly are you doing with your life? This is like a $40 product on its own and it came in the boxy charm last month with a bunch of other full size products for 20 bucks. Be sure to sign up. Now my favorites of all time are the custom enhancer drops without the glitter, but this is a close second. Oh gosh, it dried down super quick. Okay, so for lips today, I wanna try something really, really cool that I saw on Instagram. I don't know if you guys follow the beautiful Miss Banny G, I'm gonna put her right here. Um, she is a beauty influencer. She mostly does Instagram. She's extremely beautiful. I love her content. And, and I saw her using this crazy magical lip gel. Yeah, lip gel magic. And what this does or what this is supposed to do is you put on any lipstick, put this over top and this turns it into like a, keeps it from coming off. For a fresh lipstick look that lasts all day, no more lipstick on your cup, won't fade during meals, prevents your lipstick from staining clothes. A lipstick coating gel which makes your lipstick transfer proof and lasts all day with a single swipe over your lip color. So we're gonna try this. So let me line my lippies. I'm gonna use my Sugar and Spice lip pencil from Gerard Cosmetics. And I'm gonna fill her in a little. So this is a MAC lipstick in the shade Kinda Sexy. Pretty sure I haven't used this since my very first YouTube video. We'll use the back of my hand. So here we have this. Kiss print, shake well, squeeze a tiny dab onto your fingertip, apply a thin layer of lip gel magic over your lipstick. To get maximum results, combine with stick type lipsticks. Other formulas such as liquid rouges may not produce the same result. Makes sense. Yeah, I went with a stick lipstick anyway because a liquid lipstick obviously doesn't really transfer anyway. 
Tiny dab, get nervous. Ooh, ooh, so slippery. Is that enough? I feel like I need more. Is that against the rules? It's interesting because it's like, it's not disturbing my lipstick. You know what I mean? It's not like wiping it off. It feels really slippery. Now I guess you just like fan it for a second. I don't know, it doesn't say. All right, you ready guys? I'm super nervous. No way. I mean, I see a barely an outline and you know what? I feel like that's just where I missed it. That is awesome. That's pretty cool. Nowhere near what it was before. I literally just see the outline. I'm gonna like apply a little more and to really try to get the edges um, before I do like the little clip for Instagram, you know? Mm -mm 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 -mm. Yeah, that is uh, amazing. Okay, I don't think I forgot anything. My eyebrows don't look good, but whatever. Okay, so that is it for this get ready with me. I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching. This is crazy cool. I got it on Amazon. I will link it down below. This foundation is is, uh, phenomenal. I will also, I'll link everything down below, but if you had to choose two things out of this video today, these two things, I think. The coolest part about this is that you don't feel it. Look at this, clean fingertips. Nothing. And it really doesn't feel like anything. This is amazing. Okay, so, um, exciting. I had a lot of fun filming this. Thank you for watching. I'm sorry I talked about my bird for like most of it, but I'm really, really excited. <laughs> so I love you guys so much. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the notification bell. Sign up for my texts if you want. You can text at JamieSV to 81010 and you'll get a text from me to you when I upload a video or when I go live on Facebook or if I just feel like saying hi to you guys. And that's it. I'll see you in my next video. Bye. Cool, camera's dying. Perfect. <laughs> Gosh. Uh, what? How come everything's blue? Are you okay? Look, there you go, 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 okay. Stay in frame, Jamie. Sit up straight, be normal. Thank you. Is this severe? Ooh. Look away. <laughs> How is the chiropractor? Do you feel better? My muscles are just way too big and strong for them to adjust me today. Got it.